on the TV and I said dust and that's the last thing I remember Mike and welcome back to another Weirdness Really Bad Guy movie and as always we shoot our hosting segments on location. And today we're back at the beautiful Weirdnessville State Park and you know what you're really getting your deals worth tonight because we have a triple feature all in just one movie. Well, if my friend here seems a little cryptic, it's because he majored in cryptic in college. I minored in Pratt Falls. <laughs> no, what he's really trying to say is that our movie today, uh, Voyage to Prehistoric Planet of Women, was actually two other films. But we'll touch on that in some later segments on our movie today. So return with us now to 1961, Behind the Iron Curtain. And the Russians have just created the film Planet of Storms, made by the Leningrad Popular Science Studios. And as with many Soviet films of the time, they wanted them to be entertaining and have the positive socialist message and be educational as well. Right, comrade. Now, this film is the story of a group of cosmonauts who, along with their robot helper, land on the planet Venus. It's in the distant year of 2000. And in it, we find a steamy world with the swampy and steaming oceans and dinosaurs. Uh -huh. Well, special, and special effects impressive at the time. This film was seen by over 20 million people and then sold to 28 countries. So with steaming oceans and dinosaurs, we still don't have any women. Well, we'll learn about the... Uh, where the women come in in uh, later segments of our program today. Oh, okay. So tell me, Mike, why did you choose this place to camp out right by the lake? Dave, in typical guy fashion, we set up the campsite at the lake, sit here, safe steps, cast from the chairs. Right from, wow. Well, oh, hey, don't look now, but uh, Ranger Smith from Jellystone Park is back. It's Ranger Jim, and levity will get you nowhere, sir. Are you kidding? If I could levitate, I could get on Letterman and Leno. Yeah, I see you have your fishing poles. Can I see your fishing license? Oh, certainly. Here, officer. That's Ranger. Okay. And this appears to be in order. What about you, Fish Gill Breath? Where's your license? Right there. Wait a second. This isn't a fishing license. This is a lifetime subscription card to Playboy magazine. Hey, you fish for what you want, and I'll fish for what I want to fish. And just what are you going to use for bait, sir? Only the best possible bait for this, chocolates. Russell Stover, I better make sure this is regulation. You actually have a Playboy subscription card as a fishing license? That's nothing, you ought to see my hunting license. Hunting, you hunt too? Well, yeah. Do you hunt bear? No, I always wear clothes. Okay, well, we better take a break, catch a sketch, and get started with our movie voyage to a prehistoric planet of women. What's this for? That's a violation for stealing old jokes from vaudeville. We'll be right back. What's wrong, Vince? My woman's done left me, my dog ran away. 
And people still aren't wearing their safety belts. Ah, oh, Vince, you singing those buckle up blues again? Some people don't wear their seat belts. I can't believe it's true. Those kind of people get knocked right out of their shoes. So buckle up, baby. Don't sing me those buckle up blues. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. I mean it, baby. Buckle, honey, suckle, buckle, yeah. A campfire goes back as far as humans go. But some fires are for more than camping. These make steel and other things we could not do without. Industrial fires can be as friendly as campfires. During this National Engineers Week, it's a good time to think about how industrial fires and campfires are all part of the same environmental problem, a solvable problem. If she starts looking good, I know it's time to go home. Well, let me take a look at that. Let me get you another drink. Thank you. projects designed to take man beyond the confines of this earth. You are looking at the actual models of spacecraft now being developed by agencies of the United States government. This is an Apollo spacecraft designed for elliptical orbit of the moon. Its lunar landing vehicle can transport three men safely to and from the moon's surface. These are other types of manned and remote control mechanisms, each designed for a specific function many already in operation as satellites of this Earth, some in readiness for the moonshot, others designed for space, a few to serve as space stations, and the most complex of all, prototypes of craft capable of putting a man on the surface of another planet. Wheel was one of man's first inventions and has been with him all of his civilized life. But now it, like so many other of his creations, must be modified to fit his new demands. These are three types of variable radius wheels designed to transport a vehicle over a rocket. New concepts are being created almost daily. Some will never get beyond the drawing board, but others, or their descendants, will become part of man's greatest adventure, the exploration and colonization of space. All over the world, men and women are working to make that dream a reality. Every aspect of the journey is being analyzed from the tiniest control devices to the mightiest rocket engines. But it's not enough to just get there. Just as the great explorers sailed from Spain and England and France to discover the Americas so that the colonizers might come later, so will our exploration spacecraft precede the colonizers of the planets. Already plans are being made for the colonies. 
Sources of food and power must be found. Artificial atmosphere is created. Everything done to build an Earth away from the Earth. No man living today can predict exactly what the future holds. But this much we do know. All through man's march across this Earth, the wildest dreams and fantasies of one age have become the commonplaces of the next. The motion picture you are about to see can be called today a fantasy of the future. But one day, maybe not too far distant, audiences will be able to look back on it in the same spirit with which we view pictures about the first covered wagons crossing the plains. spaceship left Earth for the planet Venus. This attempt ended in tragedy. A meteor hit the ship. Everybody, everything was lost. Everything but the will to get there, to explore Venus. And so, it was only six months later that the second attempt was made. Rocket ready. Main rocket stage ready. Fuel ready. Stabilization center ready. Power ready. Air conditioning ready. Radar ready. Guidance ready. 
Airlines ready for takeoff. Astronaut Howard Sherman and Captain the, Alfred Kearns. The extra but there was science. another being with them. Kearns' invention, Robot John. Awaken, John. Awaken. Glow, John. Monitor, John. I hear you. Everything went smoothly the first part of the voyage. They traveled over halfway, 17 million miles, without mishap. Radio contact was maintained with Marsha at Earth Control, and they stopped on schedule at the United States Space Station, Texas, for refueling. Attention, all landing personnel, report on flight deck. Stand by to receive flight number 87 from Earth. Control, we listened to their progress with more concern than anyone else. Refueling A OK, over and out. Because we were the command crew, and if anything went wrong, we were set to follow. There were three of us Commander William Billy Lockhart, astronaut Hans Walters, and me, Andre Freneau. I remember how worried we were as we listened to their voices from so many miles away. Kern's calling Marsha. Kern's calling Marsha. Refueling completed. Ready for blast off.
were on the last leg of their journey. And then they saw it, Venus. Cloud formations, 30% ash content. And they prepared to land. A planet of fire below us. Is it a new world or will it consume us all? At any moment now. started going wrong. Black clouds. Light. I don't like the looks of this. I'm turning control over to Robot John. Ahead, Steve. Mountain. I am going up. Wow, close call. We're watching on the location finder. The area is strange. This is truly a prehistoric planet. Landing location is square 73. We're now dropping our beacon. Landing 300 meters southwest of square 73. Uh-oh, there's water beneath us. We're drifting. Charmin. Kern. Answer. Kern. Charmin. Kern, are you there? It's hopeless. yesterday and another one the day before that. And we're gonna have one tomorrow and the day after that also. But these meetings take about two hours long each. When are we gonna stop having these meetings? We're gonna keep having these meetings until I figure out why nothing's getting done around here. No one can predict the future. The most we can do is to be prepared for whatever might happen. That's why we carry auto, fire, and life insurance. But what about another kind of insurance? Insurance that will protect your farm from possible nuclear war. An insurance called preparedness. Do you know which animals need the most protection from fallout? Or how you will feed your livestock during fallout? Your farm preparedness plan prepared by the Department of Agriculture, is geared to help you check out your disaster preparations, to enable you to prepare for emergencies quickly and efficiently. Ask for your free copy of Your Farm Preparedness Plan. Welcome back to The Marriage Specialist. This is where we take letters and emails from you, the viewer, about your marriage problems. Welcome back, Dr. Yvonne. 
Always great to be here, Dave. Now, our first letter is once again an email. It comes to us from sleeping alone at oncouchkansas.com. Dear Dr. Yvonne, I believe that my marriage is in jeopardy because I am always saying the wrong thing. What can I do? I found there are two phrases with six words that have prolonged marriages ever since marriage has been contrived. And they are, I'm sorry, and you're right, I'm wrong. Uh, I just got a text message that follows up with that. It says, uh, what makes you a marriage specialist signed your wife at home.com? Uh, I'm sorry, you're right. I'm wrong. See, practical advice as always, Dr. Yvonne. Join us the next time we ask a question to the marriage specialist. Well, very soon after that, it became clear there was only one thing to do. Blast off for Venus ourselves. Complete the mission, explore the planet, and attempt to rescue Kearns and Sherman. If they were still alive, Keep coming. More, John. That's it. Cover me, Kern. Look out. There comes another one. I got him. Coming behind you. Secure yourself to that boulder, John. Proceed. Proceed. equipped to fight this place than we are. I'm wondering if we should be here at all. Why don't you catch a bus and go home? Don't think I wouldn't if I could find one. There he is. He's up. Pull it tight. He can hold it. You better go first, and I'll come along after you. Within two hours, we were ready to go.
Refueling was accomplished in record time. There was no time to lose. Considering the way things turned out, what I was thinking about as we sped through the dark universe on our way to an unexplored planet. I was wondering if maybe there wasn't some reason that Venus had been named after the goddess of love. If maybe there wasn't some wise old astronomer way back in the dawn of time who knew something. Something he kept to himself. But before I could come to any conclusions about it, we were preparing for our touchdown on Venus, where maybe I'd find all the answers. And then, almost before I knew it, we were there. We were landing. begin celebrating yet. Ha. Uh -huh. Oh. Is our level okay? Yep, there it is. On the button. Boy, it sure feels strange to have weight. Yes, it does seem strange. That's sure. But it's nice and solid. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'd like to see Venus. Open number three and hit the beam. Paper. Try the port viewer. Telescreen gets it okay. We'll pan port. Formations of weird rock. Something's there. I'll switch on the outside sound pickup. First time I heard her. A human being? Hold it. It's finished. Transfer it to playback. Meanwhile, you might check upon the atmosphere, Hans. It better be good. Then you better get your spacesuit. We'll move out. Andre, I want you to attempt a contact with Sherman by radio. If you raise them, tell them to report their position. Then get yourself into a spacesuit. We're going to walk about. I'll be right behind you. That'll be handy if I slip. Get popping now. It's 4.7 on oxygen. That's pretty close.
It was a weird, desolate place, but it fascinated me. And I forgot all about Kearns and Sherman and what we were there for. Received a message. What did they say? Marsha has radar movement. Sherman? She can't be sure, but it looks like two objects, one metallic and moving in the area we expected to search. Probably Kern and Sherman. Come on, Andre. take one of those things home for the zoo. You've got to be more careful, Andre. If we hadn't heard you call me... I didn't call. You called out to us. We heard you. But I didn't call you. It sounded like Lockhart. Let's be getting back. All we knew was that Marcia at Earth Control had spotted what was probably oh, Kearns and Sherman and approximately where they might be. So we started out in our space car, heading in that general direction. Not stopping to investigate the many prehistoric sites we passed. But we were still unable, no matter how hard we tried, to make radio contact with Kearns or Sherman. So we had no way of knowing what they were going through on that distant part of the planet. Let's rest. We have very little oxygen left us. Hope they're on the way. Looking for us. Through this heat. They may not be able to make it through to us. You better hope they'll get through it and spot us. I'm beginning to feel like my head's swimming. Of course. It's your torn suit. Infection is getting through. Maybe we ought to take some quinsel and... No. We'd have to rest after. Must... keep... moving. I 
am Mike, and welcome back from our movie, Voyage to a Prehistoric Planet of Women. And I'm Dave, we find ourselves here once again at the beautiful Weirdnessville State Park. And uh, as I sort of alluded to in the last segue, this movie was actually three movies. Now we're going to talk about the second one. About when Roger Corman was touring behind the Iron Curtain, he was offered a chance to film there, but he declined. But while he was on tour, he did get to see the movie Planet of Storms, the one that we talked about in the last segue. He bought the American rights to it, and he was a little hesitant, but he went for it because he was worried about the American teenage public that, uh, you know, see the movies at the drive-ins. So, not really knowing what to do with it, he dubbed it in English. Then he brought in English actor Basil Rathbone to be the commander of the American moon base. And in typical Roger Corman tradition, he shot all of Basil Rathbone's scenes in one day. It's released in 1965 to little or no response. So tell me again why you chose this point to camp from? Dave, it's the perfect place to fish. The beach? You fish for what you want to fish for, and I'll fish for what I want to fish for. Uh-oh. There you go. What's this for? Reusing an old gag. Oh. So, just where am I supposed to fish? Uh, there. Where? On the beach. See the sign? What sign? The sign. Left of that sign. The no fishing sign? Well, yeah, but that's for people who don't have fishing licenses. Oh, you're so, right. So go ahead. I'll let right. you go first. Okay, I'm going first. Good luck. Okay. Hey, you're right. You know, I think I'm getting nibbles already. Nah, come on. Yeah, I think I, I got I got something. I, you do now. You do. Didn't wow. Get, didn't get away at least. That's nice, Dave. Oh, fine. You, you're so good, you do it yourself. Okay. Let's see if I can get the other one. How's it going, uh, Mr. Hot Shot? Well, I'm not sure yet. Oh, wait a minute. I think I have something. <laughs> <laughs> Some things are always in season. <laughs> That's pretty awesome there. Let me see that, Dave. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. No fishing means no fishing. What was that a violation for? No violation? That was just for fun. You know, you're not a very nice officer. And there's your ticket, too. Oh, goody, a matching set. You know, I think we'll take a break, catch a sketch, and then get back to our movie voyage uh, to a prehistoric planet of women. You know, you really ought to try smacking him sometime. It is fun. Really? I think I will. He keeps me in chains in his filthy backyard. He starves me. And beats me. He trains me to fight. And keep on fighting. Even if my legs are broken. Even if my guts are hanging out. If I win, I live to fight another day. If I lose, I die. To him, I'm just a dog. But who's the animal? Joe. Good evening, sir. May I see your driver's license and insurance card, please? 
Alright, uh, here we go. Alright. What seems to be the problem, officer? Well, you were uh, speeding back there. Uh, I'm sorry, I guess I really wasn't thinking about what I was doing. Aren't you David Binkley from the uh, television show? Yeah, I guess I'm guilty of that too. Yeah, you know, when you uh, when you fell off uh, that bar stool, I la nearly left my head off. Oh, and, thanks. And, and then there was that scene though where you fell out of the rowboat. Oh, I, when I saw that, I, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. And then, you falling into that dumpster, I nearly peed my pants. And, <laughs> uh, do you ever get a, a laugh from standing up? Yeah, upon rare occasion. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Nobody's ever going to believe that uh, I stopped you. Uh, could I have your autograph? Oh, I don't know why not. Where do you want me to sign it? Uh, right here at the bottom of this ticket. Thank you. Don't stop. Go on. We have to go on. Come right up. That's it. Mathematics. There's always a precise probability. Mathematics might prove. Mathematics might. Ah. Marcia. Marcia. Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus, Marcia. You. You must help us. It's. It's closing in. I await your order. I await your order. Help them find us, John. The shoreline's the best. If we do, my friend, we'll never make it to them. Fat chance there is of finding them. That voice again. Hold up. Sounds like a girl. A girl? Perhaps. Or a monster.
My sisters are calling. Wake up. Wake up, Nyla. Our sisters are awake. They're hungry. You have slept enough. It is time to go into the sea. Sure, no humans here. Well, we're humans. Well, no one else has made it. You better believe it. But it sounds so human. Subhuman, you mean, like that 40 arm plant that just grabbed you. I still say it's a girl. A girl. With blue scales. Could be. He's on to something. It's possible that before us, other men got here. Especially in this age. You ought to know that, Hans. To a man of science, anything is possible until proven otherwise. imagine any people in their right mind exploring planet Venus. Come on, Hans. We're here, and we're in our right minds, aren't we? Uh, let's go. frequency for transmitting, if you hear me. I hear you. I have adjusted. Can you report your position and plot number? Over. Square 40 in shelter. Tell me what's outside. Water rock above falling on large rock. That's square 40. Not far. Ask him about the men. Hello. We would like to know. 
about Kern and also about Sherman. They do not speak. They do not move. How much time before we get there? Who knows? Commander, maybe the robot can help. Try. Keep an eye on the compass. Grab onto them. Hello. You will listen, John. First, you will obey me and do precisely what I say. You will listen. Listen, John. Obey my every command. Remove container two from Kern's first aid kit. Repeat, container two. Do this quickly. Revive him with water. Pour it over his face. Quickly. Then close his helmet. At least we know they're alive. Let's hope they stay that way. Commander, look there. I'm ready with the astro gun. Some kind of flying reptile. You may not see us. He hit him. He's turning around. Maybe not. We're in for it now. He knows we're here. Here he comes again. Open hull. We'll submerge. We were forced to submerge, even though we had killed the flying reptile, because of the damage the creature had caused when it hit us. And it was a good thing, too. For here, under the sea, we were to find the second clue to life on Venus. down for a minute. Take a rest. It's not far to the beach, if our calculations are correct. I hope this will run again. Don't worry, it will. Look, the cliffs are all in even rows, like streets. I'll look around, just five minutes. Might find something interesting.
Time now for another guy recipe. I'm going to show them how to do the guy way. And today we're going to teach you how to use, how to make real cheese hot dogs. Now these aren't these puny little pretend girly cheese hot dogs that you can get in the refrigerator section of your grocery store. These are real guy cheese dogs. Real guy cheese dogs, that's right. And you get to cook them over the fire. And you get a Get a stick, whittle it down from a nearby tree. Now, you make sure you put your hot dog on the end like this so you have maximum dipping ratio. Oh, ratio. Ooh, Ooh big words here for guys, huh? And, well, you yep, probably best to get the cheese going ahead of time so it gets all nice and hot and get ready for dipping. Remember, a little bit of ash never hurts in the cheese. That's right. Okay, now, you want to cook the hot dog to, you know, your, your favorite desired temperature here. Right, you can, you know, make the dog hurt a little or burn it beyond recognition. You do it however you want. It's your hot dog. Nobody can tell you how to do it. And then once you get it to the desired temperature, you simply take the hot dog and dip it right into the cheese sauce, like so, and straight into the mouth. Here's your ticket for willful destruction of park property, and I better make sure this is a regulation. Uh, uh, here's your ticket for willful destruction of park property. Thank you. Ready this time. All right, well, hey, that's going to do it for this time. You know what, next time, let's do Uncle Bob's baked bean surprise. Yeah, the surprise comes 50 minutes later. <laughs> that's right, Uncle Bob's been gone for 11 years. And he still puts out more gas in a closed landfill. So, uh, where did Uncle Bob go anyway? Oh, Florida. Hey, we'll see you next guy cooking session. Bye-bye. So you're gonna call me later, right? Yeah. Who's that? Oh, it's just mine. Boyfriend. Don't, Don't let, let flattery mask, mask abuse. abuse. Safe and respectful dot org. Show starts in three minutes. Popcorn. Ooh, hot dog. Popsicle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ben Orn. Show starts in two minutes.
I'm the Dairy Queen, won't you come with me along the milkshake way? I've got lots of good surprises, fresh and yummy for you every day. There are malts and shakes and sundaes too, whenever you stop. And of course your very, very favorite, the cone with the curl on top. You don't have to just dream about Dairy Queen. Your favorite Dairy Queen treat is a refreshing reality at your nearest Dairy Queen store. And now, on with the show. Well, what do you know? It's, it, it's a statue. Andre! What's up? You just look here. That's only a petrified tree. Only? Why, it's a bronze statue. And much more, Hans. Rubies. You say rubies? Show me. Simple. The eye of an idol. An idol? Yes, a reptile. A reptile resembling that flying monster that attacked us earlier. Up there. You're right, Andre. I'm not laughing anymore. There was a civilization here. And I'll bet you there still is. search for I didn't know what I felt something I don't know I felt as though I were being watched but I didn't see anything except a harmless octopus yet still feeling a strange presence I went on Then, as quickly as it came, that weird sensation vanished. And then there was nothing. Nothing but the sea. So I followed my original impulse, looking for a clue like the statue of the flying reptile. And I found nothing except a rock that I liked for its shape and that could serve as a specimen for the geologist.
stay away. Rary. Carry him away. much longer. You're, you're not alone. Here we are, Skipper. Good. We'll need more fire. Everything in the car is soaking wet. Ah, feels good to sit. How are the batteries, Hans? They stay dry. The atom plant? Still hot. You've got that worried look again, Hans. You're right. I've pulled and checked every wire and part in that darn radio. It won't operate. I've tried everything I know. I tell you, it's simply hopeless. How about a long string and an oatmeal box? <laughs> oh, Neil Fox. The radio will dry out. We know it's not a dead planet. Not completely. Our proof is the statue. And Ruby. And the woman. She's probably somewhere. For his sake. But the main thing is, there could be a whole race of people out there watching us, hiding, afraid that we'll observe them. And bite them? We came from above, Drop. To them, we're probably some kind of monster. What if they're human shaped? They very well could look like us. But mind you, I'm only advancing a little hypothetical science fiction. Because nothing should be overlooked. Let's face it. They built a city that's now under the sea. Hans, it must be true. Many made it to shore from the sea. Then why didn't they build themselves another? We may find they did. When we explore the planet. Before we leave, I'll meet her. Beautiful song and a beautiful girl. She must have heard you. Where is it? Everywhere. I suppose it could be an omen. Or maybe she's helping us. If I could just see what she looks like. Can the car make it? I'm sure. Foreboding had come over me. A chilly, ominous sensation. I didn't know what it meant. And I kept staring at that rock I'd found, as though perhaps it might hold an answer. Andre! Andre! Thanks for waiting. She'd take care of you. Stop teasing him, Hans. He's in love. <laughs>
invading demon who dared bring death to terror. suddenly dark. Well, it's no wonder. What makes you say that? There's an ash cloud above us. An ash cloud? A volcano? Yes. It's spectacular. And beyond the volcano, it looks like the lights of a city. The red spot Andre saw. We must get a move on. Not right away. This might be our only chance to gather some samples. Lava and ash to take away with us. All right. We'll go to a much better vantage point than right now. German, come. But look at the magnificence. No one on Earth has seen such a sight.
Well, Dave, it's about time to uh, push up on wraps on our movie, but um, where do we leave off in our last segment? Well, we were uh, on the other side of the lake, actually. No, I meant in the story about the movie, where'd we leave off? Oh, well, Roger Corman had just released his movie, Voyage to a Prehistoric Planet, but that movie just didn't cut it. That's when he decided to go back from scratch and take out the, the English, um, you know, dubbing and, uh, you know, all the Basil Rathbone scenes. And he replaced them with Venetian gill women, and these gill women could both uh, breathe in the water or up on the land, and they had these, uh, actually, shell halter tops that they all wore. Hmm. You know, they were, uh, they were headed by Mamie Van Doren, 1950 sex pot. Problem there was, you know, finding shells large enough to cover her, you know. Yeah. Thank you. But cover them they did, and they did most of their shooting at the Leo Carrillo State Beach. Which would be a great place to find, a, to find Venetian Gill women. And two years later, Roger Corman finally had a film that he could sell to the teenagers going to the drive-ins. And make money he did. Roger says he never lost money on a film that he produced. So tell me, Mike, are you sure that this is a safe place to fish? Because I can't afford any more violations. This has already cost me a lot of worms. Do, do, do you see a sign here anywhere? No, no, not here on this side. This is for you. And this is for you. This but is there's no sign here. It's still the same lake, sir. But there's no sign. Very well. But we're not fishing. We're fishing. Very well. He's good. Yeah, he's good. You know what, we'll take a break, catch a sketch, and we'll uh, we'll finish up with our film for the day. These are for you, too. What's this for? Extraneous signposting fee. You mean erroneous. We'll be right back. I wonder they don't have to charge to get in here. They make enough. So you could use this. Right, come here. <laughs> now, as a public service for the employment challenged, Weirdness presents another job search tip. Writing no permanent address on your application might be counterproductive. May your job search be fruitful. Whatever the heck that means. Good luck. Smash the panel! Uh, I have. I've done everything.
sure. Let me help you out, my friend. I never thought I'd see your ugly face again. <laughs> we shave him, and he insults us. <laughs> so we should have saved Kurt's robot instead. <laughs> Turn, you rascal. Knew you'd make it. Is the robot finished? Yes. of the situation, and though we tried to keep our spirits up, it was still pretty discouraging. Any the volcano had destroyed some of our provisions, and our rocket ship's fuel supply was low anyway, considering the added weight of Kearns and Sherman. It looked like we'd have to be starting back very soon. What else is there to do? Well, <laughs> we can look for Andre's girl. Very cute, Hans. You name them after us? Hmm? Well, with triplets, it's better with numbers. Looks to me like he's raising his own countdown. Why not names? I'd forget. I'm worried about him. <laughs> so you really found proof there were people on this planet. Hard to believe. Believe it or not, my dear Mr. Kern, it's true. And they could still be here. I don't go along with that. Could a human survive in a place like this? You survive. And man will almost always adapt himself in time. And don't forget in the dim past we all lived in water. For centuries our Earth was toxic. But that atmosphere evolved mankind's form, adjusting the earth. And I'd bet that these people on our planet couldn't live. The air'd be poisoned. Afraid I don't share your opinion. You just can't close your mind to it. We found proof. Proof of intelligent being. And those lizard men of Kearns. That's proof. Look, suppose they do look like lizards. Couldn't they be people? Hmm? Suppose they saw the ship. Got frightened, then donned their lizard costumes, eh? then jumped up and down to spook us away. <laughs> what possible story could explain it better, huh? <laughs> None. You're the winner. Joking aside, my friend, man, lizard, or what, I know there were or are intelligent people here. If we just had time, I think they might come to us. Look, even you, Kern, said you thought you saw the lights of a city beyond the volcano. I said they looked like, not were. Here, you two. Have some coffee and rest your voice. If only there was some way to communicate with them, some way to make them understand we were not an enemy, that we wanted nothing except to know their ways, study their civilization. Or was it really all just fancy? Just my wishful imagination? And that sound only an accident? 
caused by the wind in the canyon. Hey, hey, we can be proud of. Look at all the samples we got. There's going to be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. This one's loaded, old man. Steady, child. Bring the spectra. seemed to increase in strength. As we planned our takeoff procedure, which required some adjustment because of Kearns and Sherman, I know we all felt slightly uneasy, nervous, as we listened to the heavy rainfall on the ship. For myself, I, I listened with a sinking feeling, as though every drop were taking me further and further from ever finding her. Then suddenly, Quick, 
Quickly, Andre. Hunt. They are stronger than our gods. They are stronger than terror. Terror is a false god.
plan to return to Venus. Lockhart and Kearns have moved on to other missions. There's Mars to be explored and Jupiter. But I can't forget her and I'm going back. Maybe someday I'll see her. Maybe I'll die trying. seen rushes direct from Hollywood of pictures being released in the coming weeks. And we are proud to announce that this theater will soon bring you the greatest array of pictures ever to reach our screen. You will see the finest stars in exciting performances. You will thrill to the suspense, comedy, romance, and drama of world-famous stories. Here's a glimpse of a few of them coming to this theater soon. Legal seen this? Uh, yeah. Um, sure, what happened to your, um... Oh, yeah, I know. If it gets any worse, I'll have it checked out. Worse? How could it get worse? Yeah, maybe we should call somebody? I'm fine. You wouldn't ignore this, so why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately, because time lost is brain lost.
The Weirdness Really Bad Movie sadly presents the Weirdness Thought of the Week. There is no map to the future because no one that ever goes there comes back. First speech, you've got to watch very carefully. Because... Mr. Rankrum. Wait a minute, boys. Time out for Margaret. Mr. Rankrum, uh, do, do you think I could have the afternoon off? Well, the first day of shooting and you want to quit? Is it important? Oh, it's very important. A friend of mine is sick. And this is the first day that they'll let me see her. What's wrong? Infantile paralysis. That might have been me. Or your little boy or girl. It strikes the poor and the rich. No one is safe from infantile paralysis. No matter who you are or what kind of home you live in. With all my money, what could I have done for my child without the help of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis? For 10 years, the National Foundation has been fighting polio in every part of the country. Years of study of research by hundreds of the nation's leading laboratory scientists, by famous doctors, by the men and women of your own community who have unselfishly devoted their lives to the creation of an organization ever on the alert to combat the sudden dread epidemic of polio. Boise, Idaho will not forget the terror of polio. It struck there this past summer and within a few hours the National Foundation, with every modern scientific aid, answered the call for help. Wilmington, Delaware suffered. So did Omaha, Nebraska, and Akron, Ohio. What about your town? What about your child? Your loved ones? They could be next, you know. You and I and all of us must fight infantile paralysis. And the only way that we can do it is with our dimes, quarters, and dollars. Fighting infantile paralysis costs a lot of money. But it'll help her and thousands of other children like her to walk again. Please give. Give whatever you can. And whatever you give, some child somewhere will thank you. Please give now. One half of all the funds collected in this county remain in this county for local use. The other half goes to the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis for scientific research, education, and epidemic aid. as much as I do. Can you really wait four years for the next one to come along? I didn't think so. So to help pass the time, I've created a little something that uh, helps me relive the memories of the Olympic ski jumping. And here it is. Made with nothing more than cardboard, poster board, white duct tape, and a little electric football player on some popsicle sticks. It's lightweight, portable, and best of all, cheap. We're going to give it a try and we'll see if he has the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat. Well, he landed.
off my foot. You know, that's going to wrap up our guy movie for today. And that's today. not the only thing that's wrapped up Well, who told you to cast into the wind? Look, I read that in the Fly Fishing Journal. You read the Fly Fishing Journal? Well, maybe it was the Flying Fish Journal. <laughs> that, I believe. Had pretty pictures. I bet it did. Oh, wait. Maybe it was the Frying Fish Journal. Pretty pictures in there, too? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, you know what? Maybe we can get out of this with my pocket knife. Really? Where's your pocket knife? It's in my back pocket. I think I can reach that. I don't think so. Why not? It's in my back pocket of my pants at home. Why the... Bye, friends. Thanks for joining us for the Really Weirdness Bad Guy movie. You know, unless the two of you are married, I'm sure there's a violation here somewhere, but, but I can take care of that. Huh? Dearly beloved. Hey, 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 is that a Bible? Well, no, it's my Cub Scout book, but it'll do. We are gathered here today. Hey, hey, isn't that a, a red-beaked, yellow-bellied sap sucker over, su sucker over there? Where? Oh, over there. Over there? I think you're right. <laughs>